All right, so originally I wasn't gonna make a video doing this, but I might as well because this may help somebody out there doing something similar. Uh, I started making the rotisserie, okay? And I know a couple of videos ago, I was saying I was gonna do like a tip over jig, but I I'm changed my mind and I kind of wanted to be able to rotate 360 degrees just all the way around. It's gonna be easier and uh, I started looking around my shop and I have things that um, will help me build it. So, uh, so far, I only have, I bought these casters here, uh, 20 bucks for all those, for four casters. That's all I've spent so far on this jig, okay? I had these, these uh, pieces of two by two or two and a half by two and a half these beams that were for the building, okay? Like they were left over uh, um, uh, prior to I even bought this property. These were, these beams were here. So I know they're not the best thing for this type of situation. Uh, they're kind of thin and, you know, but I mean, they do hold up a building, right? So once this car is stripped and it only has the shell, you know, once you get the suspension off and, you know, the A-arms and all of the, all that stuff, uh, the car is going to probably weigh 800 pounds. So right now I can, I can actually lift it myself anyway off the ground a little bit. Just by grabbing onto that and lifting, I can lift the car. So we're not talking about a lot of weight here, okay? Uh, and then I had this. These are actually this beam here. These two beams are uh, the door bars that were in the black car, the Fox body. Uh, so they were inside the doors. These are pretty heavy duty. And I just doubled them up, welded them together. And then I had these little square, I don't remember what they were from, but sitting in my pile over there. And I just ran some bolts through, okay, back here and over there. And uh, yeah brought off, uh, came off the end of it with this, um, I believe this is inch and five eighths, uh, roll cage tubing. Okay. So that's going to be my pivot point. So basically what I did was I measured, you know, found the center of the car, obviously measured from the ground up to the center of that tube. And I matched it on both front and back. Okay. And then made sure that using the angle finder, uh, wherever that's at, right here. Okay, we use the angle finder. So I know that the angle of this is the same as the angle of the one up front, and they're the exact same height off the ground, and they're centered on the car. Okay, so you gotta kind of do that when you're making this rotisserie. You, if, if you're off at all, like if one's higher or one's lower, it's not gonna rotate smoothly. Uh, you kinda wanna imagine from you know your pivot point here to the pivot point up front, you wanna imagine that it's, it's like a straight line through that. That way your car will rotate freely. You know, it won't bind up, okay? Uh, so, like I said, so far we're into this whole thing for 20 bucks. Um, and yeah, so what I'm gonna do is my, uh, what I'm thinking, is making some triangles out of this, okay? So if I make some triangles, it's gonna basically triangulate here, maybe, I don't know, in this area, over to this area, so that'll get the car off the ground. Now, you gotta get the car off the ground the same height as the roof. So in other words, from, from the center here to the top of the roof, I kind of calculated that. What I did was I used a piece of PVC, okay? You take this piece of PVC and you carefully, gently put it on the roof, okay? Try to get it to not roll around or whatever, okay? So now we know that's the top of the roof and that's pretty level. So what you're kind of doing is guessing from the distance from here to here. So that distance there, I, I measured it and got an approximate right around three feet. Okay. So that means that we have to get this car, not the wheels, 
the chassis itself off the ground three feet. Okay, so you, you wanna calculate that off of basically this here. So we're already off the ground maybe a foot and a half. Okay, so that means that that pivot point if we're already off the ground a foot and a half, we need to come off this another, what, two feet? So we need to be up in this area, okay? So once we get the car up there, in theory, it should rotate without hitting anything. And you also want to kind of calculate the, the width too, but I think that the distance between here and here is further than the distance between here and here. Because you gotta remember, you're, when you spin the car, you don't wanna hit the sides either. Because what I was saying was, uh, you want to make sure that your width too is not any different or any more than the, the, the width or the height of the roof. So from the center of that, you know, we're only, we're not even at what, 32 inches, which is not quite three feet. Okay, so we go from the tube. So you see three feet way out here, which we're way past the car, okay? So if I go three feet, I'll definitely clear the sides. It's gonna be the roof that's the problem, okay? So as you can see, 32, 34, 35, about 34 and a half roughly, and three feet up here. So it would just clear, okay? So once we spin the car, the roof is only gonna be a few inches off the ground, which is fine, that's no big deal. Uh, the only, and then you got to remember also, once I build the, the little frames, uh, they'll be up on casters too. Okay, so that's another three or four inches there. And then the only other thing that we kind of need to consider would be connecting, uh, connecting it under the car. Now, I was thinking of doing something removable. So like when I have it, when I get the car in the position I want, um, I can lock it, you know, we'll put some bolts on um, the pivot points and we'll lock it in place. And then I can add a bar underneath just to keep it more stable. But when I'm spinning it, I can remove the bar. So, uh, you know, I just, I think that would be safer to have something connecting it. And then also, if I wanna roll the car, I can connect that bar and it'll keep my ends from like, you know, from collapsing. That's another thing, you know, because we're gonna be making the the A frames or the or the the triangles rather. Um, they're gonna be like this. So if you try to move the car, it could collapse, which you don't want that to happen. Okay. <laughs>
is gonna fit kind of like that, okay? You see what I'm saying? Kind of like that. And, uh, and then angled the other one to fit, I think you know what I mean. Uh, and then that will fit inside of our pivot point. So, yeah, I mean, it's not gonna be that much structure going on here, but I'm hoping that it doesn't need to be. Uh, and then again, like I said, if I connect it through the, underneath the bottom of the car, the only thing with connecting it through the bottom of the car is it may not clear it when the, when the car rolls around. It may not clear that bar. That's why I was saying that I might want to like make it removable. All right, so we got these all um, cut. The angle's cut to where it fits nice and, um, well, the fit up is good enough for MIG welding. You know, when you're MIG welding, it doesn't have to be that perfect. You can fill a pretty big gap, but I have it pretty good. And the idea is, is they need to be the same. Okay, these two need to be the same and then the height of your pivot point needs to be the same and all that. Um, you know, you kind of, you guys are kind of starting to get the theme of what's going on here. Everything needs to be symmetrical. Uh, what goes on in the front needs to go on in the back uh, because, you know, if you're higher here and lower here, uh, your your car is going to want to try to, when, when, when you're rolling it, it's going to want to like bind up and when you pivot it. So you want everything to be symmetrical, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and start scuffing up the areas that we're welding. And then I'm going to take some more measurements to make sure that the our heights are the same, uh, everything's the same. So...
Okay, so admittedly, this was a little sketchy to get this thing up that high in order to get this on there. Uh, but it works. I mean, I set all the weight on it and it, it did flex a little bit, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it works. So, you know, I mean, the flex came mostly from this bar here. It kind of flexed up a little bit and then out. But uh, you need to remember that we have all of the, the diff, I mean, the whole under suspension. This weighs a ton right here, okay? So we're testing this with a lot of extra weight. Like, like you're not supposed to put a car on, the, on a rotisserie with all this stuff on it. I just kind of wanted to test it to see, you know, if it would hold the weight and it, and it holds it fine. So uh, once it's much lighter, it's going to be, um, it'll work. So, yeah, I mean, I don't think there's going to be an issue. And it, it rotates really easily, as you can see from the video. You know, I, I put it on first and then had it fall into place on its own and it rotated nicely. So I may, I'm gonna take it all back apart just because we're not gonna, we're not putting it on there now. I have to get all that suspension stuff off before I even, you know, put the front piece on and get this thing up in the air like that uh, because it is pretty high. So, but I mean, I, my calculations came out good. Um, I'll show you what I mean. So yeah, my calculations came out pretty good. So if you go three feet from the center, you can see that that goes right out to the edge of the car, okay? So if you pivot off of that three feet and you just keep pivoting it down, you can see that we're about, I don't know, five inches off the ground. So yeah, I mean, so once this, the whole car rotates, uh, we'll have five inches of clearance on the side. And I believe that the same on the roof. Yeah, three feet's gonna well clear the roof. You can see that's up here, I won't focus, but yeah, it's way up there. Uh, so actually the roof wasn't the, roof wasn't the issue, it was the sides. Um, these dots, and they stick out a little bit like this and yeah, that's gonna be, this will be more, this will be closer to the ground than the roof will be when it's flipped over or as it's flipping over, I should say. But yeah, I think it's gonna work. Uh, like I said, I just wanna get all the rest of the weight off of it first before we actually get it on the rotisserie. And then, um, yeah, I, uh, the only mistake I really made was when I bought these wheels, I didn't buy locking casters. So I just totally, that totally slipped my mind to buy the ones that you can lock. Um, those were a couple bucks more, I think. But um, I could always buy another one and I could put it an extra one or I could put like an outrigger. I was actually thinking of doing that, um, doing like right off this here since I have the room, you see, cause I can come out to say here and it won't interfere with the rotation with an outrigger. I can go there and I can go back here so that, you know, this whole thing is more stable this way and same with the front. And then we can do some locking casters on that. So um, yeah, we'll still do a little tweaking to it, but I mean, the main, the main part of it's finished. But anyway, uh, I think that's gonna do it for this video. It's probably getting long. Uh, yeah, so the moral of the story is, is just, Use, your, use stuff you have around your house or your shop or whatever. That's what I did. I mean, this literally cost me 20 bucks. And it, even if I had the casters, I wouldn't even have spent that. So I, I wanted to be able to roll it because the goal is, is to roll this, uh, what, you know, when it's ready for paint, I want to be able to roll this out of the shop and then roll it over here into this bay for painting. So that's the goal. That's why I wanted the casters on there but it kind of just slipped my mind to buy the locking ones. But anyway, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Check y'all later.